Uh, good morning, YouTube. This is Seb Shah from SNS Lofts. Uh, today we're here at uh, Paul Greens at Willen Hall, uh, Wolverhampton, West Midlands. And uh, Paul's going to take us uh, through his uh, setup today. Hi, right, Paul. So, you want to just talk us through? Uh, I'm, yeah? I fly Birmingham rollers now. Right. Uh, these are some of my flyers. Yeah. Right, we're going there, yeah. Yeah. And also, you want to mention the importance of what you're carrying in your hand as well, please. Well, this this is my mask because I've got a, a lung disease, so I have to put it on when I come in here. Right. So I'll look a bit funny. No oh, bother, face, no mate. bother, no bother. It's right. Better. Well, as long as we can hear you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I use that as well. So these are your... These are Birmingham Rollers. Right, okay. Young birds. Yeah. I love the lofts. Look at the space they've got. We usually keep 20 birds in a, in a box. That's good. That's really good. That's really good. Some more there. Mm -hmm. But excuse the mess, I haven't swept up this morning. No, they're molting. So you got another about five to six weeks of this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A couple of droppers in the bottom. Yeah. There we go. That's the droppers there. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Oh look at it. This is this is this is Pigeon Haven, isn't it? Just more more kit boxes. More kit boxes, they're empty. They're empty. Uh, now you would love the, I would love this sort of a room and uh, do what I like. I'll probably sleep in here. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. This there's a few stock ends in there. Right. Ro rollers and tipplers. Yeah. So you can just get four tipplers all on the back there. Yeah, these this is what we're interested in. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I should have checked the rollers out by the way, and you could uh, film mm. them a bit better. Yeah, so now as we go along, so no, is, that, is that how you, how you got them? Just, just mixed up with the rollers I've now? I've got them mixed, yeah. Right. Because, I mean, keeping them separate, it's uh, extra chore. Me cocks, stock cocks, right. and stock in, so yeah. I'm pulling them out. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Feathers <laughs> everywhere. And what's the oldest bird you got here then? The oldest bird? Yeah. Uh, 2011. That's uh, this cock here on the bottom. I think that's 2012, this bronze bottle. Right. I think that's 2013, mm -hmm. I think. Black bottle up there. Print there, light print. Yeah. That's this year's. The bread here? Yeah, this one here is two years old. Blue mm. Black model, the red model with the top is two years old. Right. So it's just fairly a new uh, sort of uh, uh, a new stock. These are me. I've only got eight cocks. I don't keep many. Right. There's eight cocks in here. Right. Got a few more ends this year. Right. I mean, I could put them all in the ivory if you want to film them in the ivory. Yeah, no, we can. We can do that. It's more to do with your setup, to yeah, be honest with yeah, you. Right. Right, so it's more like, you know, what you, but so what, what I want people to see is that, you know, I mean, this is, to me, that's Pigeon Haven. This is Pigeon Haven, so. Well, I've, I've altered this since I stopped flying tipplers. Right. This section here, there wasn't the front on here. Right. It was like all across there and across there. Uh-huh. L-shaped, all the individual boxes. Right. With the droppers underneath in sliders. Right. So it was mainly like that. Right. But now I've turned it into a stock pen because I, I don't fly the tipplers very often. Right. Now. But obviously, just like uh, like Tommy does, Tommy Dilks. Yeah. He, you just kept those, but the birds you have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And th that's that's the only four hens you've got. And that's now I've got some more in the library. Right. Let's go and have a look at that then. I'll spice them out to be give them a bit more room. So. Oh, you've got enough. <laughs> yeah, you've got enough. I'm I'm, I'm surprised you're not leaving. This is just have a look at this, guys. Look, that's a that's a corridor and a half. Right, I would, I would give my, well, none of my arms, but you know, this is just exactly uh, what the, doc, uh, the doctor ordered. To be honest with you, it is, sir. I, it I is. built this shed in 1986. Really? Yeah. Right. Okay. So you built it yourself? Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, you've got the. So is that obviously it's raised? I can see that it's raised. Yeah. But the garden slopes up, so it gets. Yeah. 
brilliant. Nice. Oh, look at this. This is just absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. This is the ivory for them cocks to come into. Right, what right. What I tend to do, I have the cocks in one day, yeah. the hens in the next day. Right. They settle down a bit. Then. Right. Is, th is this a new addition then? Pardon? Is this the new addition? Well, I've, had, I've had this good many years now. Right. There's nothing in there, just spare boxes. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you tip your hands in there. Yeah. You wanna yeah, yeah. That'll come in it. Yeah. Right. There's also a few rollers in there as yeah. well. Yeah. And a fan tail. And a fan tail. Yeah. I think there's about five or six ends in there. Mm. You know, the, the, the space itself, uh, I mean, I'm not going to ask you how many boxes you've got of breeding your boxes, because <laughs> it's just, it, this is, so this is where you, oh, you breed them all over, don't you? I breed in here, I breed in there. Yeah. I breed in that. I've mainly breed the chippers in that section of the, in that other shed. Right there. Now right. come into this ivory. Right, right. But they can't come through there, they just into there like. Mm. Right. I mean, I've got some in there, but there's no chippers in there. Right, okay. Must have just uh, visit. Just, just rollers or whatever. You right. Know. Brilliant. So, what got you got you into rollers then? Oh, you always kept rollers before. Well, I've had, when I moved in this house, yeah, I had the rollers because at one time mm. there used to be a club where Tommy Dilks and Jim lives. Right. The flu, flu rollers. Right. So everybody seemed to have the tipplers, then have a few rollers to in the winter, like just uh, something to do. Right. I just kept them there. And I've done well with them. Mm -hmm. I've won the All England, I've won the Midland, I've won the National. Excellent. I've won most things with them. Right. So, in terms of the tipplers then, uh, you know, when did you start flying tipplers? Oh, a few years ago. The peregrine wiped me out. Ah, right, okay, the same common problem. I mean, here, I fly rollers, they've only got to fly 20 minutes. Mm. The peregrine there, doesn't it? Really? I mean, yesterday, I had some up yesterday, I was rolling away and uh, eight minutes Peregrine was in, I chased them everywhere, pushed them up in the top, I had them come back in ones and twos after three and a half hours. So, you couldn't fly tipplers. No, no, it's all Not here. Yeah. It's impossible. So I'm that's struggling to fly rollers here, to be quite honest. Right, so that's pretty much the reason, which is a common reason across the country. Yeah, yeah. That and people are packing up. Yeah, it's getting worse, it is getting worse. Yeah. Well, here, I think I'm in the middle of about four different pairs. Wow. So you really, there's no escape for you? No escape. Mm, no, I'm really sad to see that. Yeah. Really I mean, the tippers, I'd love to fly tippers again. Oh, yeah? I mean, I've done well with the tippers. Yeah. Really well, like. Yeah. So I thought I'll go on to the rollers to, I haven't got a fly so long, hmm. it's just as bad. Sure, sure, sure. So, alright, shall we go and have a look at your some diplomas yeah. and trophies and whatnot? Yeah. And then we can have a little chit chat as well. Yes. So yeah. I can pick uh, your brains, <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Okay. That is awesome. Right, definitely what I would like to do when I move, hopefully. And this is exactly what I want to do, because I've got to keep... Uh, I've got obviously tipplers and as well as uh, I don't fly them anymore because the same issue as you have uh, it's uh, the Pakistani high flies as well oh, right. oh there's some of the ones I've got it's three, three strains in them beautiful boats absolutely beautiful so I need all this space right so we've got a bit of history here a uh, few, few diplomas there yeah a few <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. handful handful what's the oldest one here then uh, Paul you want to take us through these diploma the oldest diploma yeah the oldest diploma oh. 1980 1980. Right. Easter fly. Yeah, yeah. 16 hours one. 16 hours one, yeah. Novice I was then. Yeah. Same as... Uh, Jim. Jim, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same as Jim in 1980. I, I, was, I was flying in uh, 1977, uh, 77, 78. Really? Yeah. I mean, these are... These are from... Derby Flying Club. Yeah. We have we used to have an inter club fly between right. Derby and Warsaw. Uh-huh. 
and uh, I won this one, not first position. Right. Fifteen thirty-eight. Right. Young bird. It's underneath. Another one here. Derby against Derby. Mm. Fourteen hours thirty-four. Young bird. Yeah. And when was that? Then date. Then it's not dated, is it? Some of them. Oh, it is 84. dated. 84. 84. First to the fourth. 84. Yeah, 84. 84. Um, Max again. Yes. Yeah, uh, National yeah. Tipper Union of Great Britain. When is how old is that? That's 84 as well, isn't it? And that's who's that son? Is it uh, Paul? Yeah. Paul Bowden. Paul Bowden. Brian yeah. Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one here. Uh, Cleveland Tipler. Union. Yeah, yeah. That's in America. Yeah. Is that when you? Well, I mean, there was one in Germany as well. Like, uh, uh, Jim, yeah, showed me a couple of diplomas. Yeah. And they yeah. were, yeah, they were in Germany. Right. So we've got the lovely Mrs. Green here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for having us today. That's all right. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Likewise. Yeah. We'll just get through a few of them. Yeah. Please do. Please do. Please well, do. Nineteen hours. One. Nineteen. 80. Uh huh. That's a long day, isn't it? That's a long day. Long day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Young bird, four hours forty-six. That was a good. One. That was a good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. August young bird, yeah. nineteen eighty, twelve hours twenty-one. Not bad at all. Are you into this? Yes. Yeah. Young bird, this. club fly, thirteen hours fifty-eight. Mm hmm. Nineteen eighty. Brilliant. 1981. 14 hours 28. Yeah, yeah. 1981, 13, 14. Mm. 1257, 81. Brilliant. Young birds. 10 hours, 2 minutes. That's 81 again. 81. Yeah. 82. Yeah, 1232. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, then different. Different diplomas because yeah. if anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. brought the uh, brought the record, yeah, the picture will go on there, the base picture. The, yeah, well, that was uh, yeah, nineteen hours eleven minutes. Mm. Les Robinson brought yeah, the yeah. record. He's went went mm. on. Same again. Yeah. June long day fourteen fourteen fifty nine. Yeah. Young bird twelve oh five. Mm. Young bird, fifteen twenty-seven, club record. Mm -hmm. Young bird, twelve forty-four, second place. Uh -huh. They are fourteen twenty-two, young bird, club record. So on every every fly we had, uh -huh. there'd be a, a club record. No, brilliant, brilliant. Twelve hours fifty-one. First prize, young bird, mm. 12 hours 15, young bird, that was 82, 83, 83 11, yeah. 12, mm. 15, 5, 83. Yeah. Could, uh, could you also read out there who actually signed it and what not who? <coughs> the secretary then was Johnny Kimbottom. Yeah, right, okay. On, in uh, 83, mm -hmm. now again. Yeah. 10 hours 20, young birds, that's 10, 10 hours 20, 20. Yeah. yeah, that's 83 as well, yeah. 19 hours 19 6, yeah, that's 83, June uh, 83, 83, yeah, 8 hours 38, that was a bad one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah, the previous standards, yes, 12.49. So 83 seems to be a year that you've been very busy, indeed. Yeah. Well, obviously, like many other years, but uh, it's it's been a very productive year. 14.41. Huh? Yeah, 18. So I think uh, are you probably that's all you did then on yeah. that in that particular year. You just spent all your time with the birds. I did most years. Yeah. You had to. Yeah, obviously, yeah. 11 hours 29, mm. 83. 10 hours 53, young birds, 83. Yeah. 
1980 there. That's 19, April, April 1980. 16. 69, yeah, 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 yeah. And who signed that? Is that Newton, Mr. Newton? Arthur Newton, yeah. yeah. NTU, that is. Yeah, yeah, that is NTU, yeah. John Cullen, yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Green, thank you for this evening. This is NTU as well. Yeah, yeah. 12 21 1980. Yeah, that's Cullen and uh, Newton, Newton, yeah. Same again, Same again. 1358. Yeah. 1257. Mm -hmm. Same again, same mm -hmm. two names. Camplin this time. Yep, yep. Mr. Newton and Mr. Camplin. 1244. Arthur Newton, yeah. Mickey Camplin. Are you enjoying it? On this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice blog, Mickey. Yeah. He comes here every Thursday. All right, bless him. Yeah. 1422 National. Mm. 1906, 1983. Yeah, that's Brian Rose and Brian Rose and John Cullen. Yeah. 1441 mm -hmm. in 83. Mm. 84, 16 hours through. Paul Bowden. Mm. Yep. That's 86. 17 hours. Yeah. <coughs> that was young bed, that mm. was. Vic Lewis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan Rose and Lewis, yeah. And, a, and again. 17 hours 49. Central section. Mm. Pilot speed in Zerlock. Yeah. Uh, 1322. Yeah, that's Paul. Something about Paul. 84, 80, 87. 87, that is, yeah. Another one, 87, 1445. 40, 45, yeah. 1706. Mm. That, that was a young bird, that was. Yeah. 18 hours 50. Yeah, 1850. That's 88. Yeah. Four birds there. Yeah, yeah. No, five, five birds. Yeah, one, two, yeah. 13 hours 10. Yeah, five here again, yeah. Yeah. 14, 17. Mm. 88. 18 hours 4. Mm. 89. Mm. Brian Rouse, Paul Bowden. Yeah. 1449, yeah. 89, <coughs> 1828, 1990, yeah. 1410, 1625. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the who, who signed that? Name? Eddie Plester. Eddie Plester. Brian Rose. Brian Rose. We're gonna right, go brilliant. over. To this is the kitchen. Right, brilliant. Uh, she's just cooking the dinner at the moment. Excellent. Excellent. Some trophies here. Brilliant. Brilliant. N T U trophies and. Mm. Let's just get the nice room there. This is my favourite one. Right. And why is that your favourite? I won the NTU Novice Cup in 1980. Oh, that's the one that the diploma we saw as well? Big, massive cup. Right, okay. Yeah. So now this has been reduced, is it? Well, no, that's what you keep, but... Oh, you the, get the, the cup. Oh, yeah, yeah, it goes the back. The cup's this high. Yeah, that goes back. Massive, massive cup. Yeah. A few more NTUs. And in... Uh, in this cup here. Right. Uh, you've got your medals there, haven't you? Medals. Yeah, yeah. There you go. These are what you get when you break a club record. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, there's, there's loads of them. On the back, it tells you. Yeah, what 1986. Fly. Yeah, Easter Fly. PW Green, 17 hours. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. It's There's all loads there. of them, look. Yeah, yeah. Because I broke a lot of records. Uh -huh. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's uh, yeah, PW Green 19. Oh, So you packed up, you said, tw uh, two years ago, two, three years ago? No, I haven't flew for uh, 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, <coughs> I'd like to. Mm. But obviously the issue's uh, up, up above. Better dream. Yeah. yeah. It's a nightmare. Section winner. Yep. Nineteen oh seven minutes. Nineteen seven. Oh, brilliant. Another one here. I'll be, I'll be picking your brains in a minute with yeah, a lot okay. of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen hours one. Uh huh. Yeah, that's uh, yeah nineteen eighty long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, day. now would you believe it? Now with I mean that. You were to, I mean, you got third position for that. Yeah, yeah. That's been 19 hours, one no, minute. Yeah. And uh, now you look at it, nowadays, people are getting beautiful. eight, seven, eight hours. They're, get, they're getting the first yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. I think recent fly with the NTU, uh, Tony Wieser, I think there's about 14 or 15, the recent one. Uh, other than that, it's just been, it's just been a nightmare. Well, in, a, in our club in Warsaw, yeah. in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, there was over 20 members mm. in one club and in that club I flew Young Bird Kit, International Young Bird, 17 hours 6 and I was second right. in a Young Bird fly in so, the club, <laughs> you know, so what was it like in the National? national exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, you were competing at any one time with three, four hundred flyers, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you'd be lucky to even, you know, gather up 30. Another one here. Yeah. Right, which one's that then? Fourth. NTU. Yeah, that's 19 hours 17. 17. There you go. Fourth. 86. 86, fourth. Yeah. Another one here, section. Yeah, that's 14 hours 22. That's a young bird. Yeah, that's 1982. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 1982. Brilliant. That's quite a few, not. Yeah. I've got some more in there. Right. But they need cleaning, though. No, that doesn't matter. That doesn't, you know. So. Right. These are all my own. Right. They're all worn out, right? Right. But they need a good clean. No, they're <laughs> lovely. Yeah. They are absolutely lovely. Look at that. That's 1988 Youngbird knockout winner. Paul Green. Uh, that's the one on the left is uh, 1988. But what, what we used to do in that club. Yeah. You used to have all your trophies put on one cup. Right. So you haven't got a lot of little ones. Yeah. You know, like, like this one, for instance. Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that little? <laughs> well, it wants a good clean. It's yes. Oh yeah, yeah. The times are on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see them for I that year. I can see them. I can see them. That's the long day. Uh, first, fourteen hours fifty-nine. Uh, second, young bird, and that's that's fifteen hours twenty-seven. And then you've got first young bird. That's fourteen twenty-two. Then th uh, first. Uh, third, young bird, twelve, fifty-one, and so on, and so forth. It's there. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. It's all there, mate. Some big ones down here. Yeah. Don't know what this one was. Nineteen eighty-six. Yeah. Easter fly. Easter fly. Nineteen seventeen. Yeah. Seven. And the first long day as well. Seventeen forty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Walk. Club rec two club records there. Yeah. One a good clean though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What year is that? That is. <coughs> That's 1983. 83, yeah. You've got the 19 hours, uh, six minutes there as well on that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, hey, that's some history there. That's some history and achievements there. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. After fly tipplers again are really good. Right. So, but what uh, do we have here, sir? These these are letters that were sent to me dad. Yeah. From Will Floyd. Oh, brilliant. This is dated. Right. Can't even, can't even see. Uh, I think it'd be at the end, isn't it, when he signs off? That's the. That's how. Yep. 
No? Wilf. Wilf. Well, yeah, that's history, isn't it? That is history. That's me dad, Fred. Fred. Fred Green. Freddie Green. Yeah. And you guys were living on Stoke on Trent at that time? He was at Stoke on Trent. Right. But the, I've got quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, it would be right. nice nice for you to just read a bit out of some one of one of the letters, which you probably find interesting. There's one in here about uh, I mean look at all the bits of paper you used to use. Yeah. That them, you know, bits of paper no, I don't know. Nice writing though. Oh absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's 72. That's June 72. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's that, I can't read it. I need my glasses, like, but... Uh, right. There's some in here that my dad says to him, if you bring any black models... Right. He would like them, and he used to send him the black models. Right. And all these pieces of paper. So... Yeah, you know, he's... Yeah. Proper signature there. He's proper signature here, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And that's also... Yeah, he didn't put the date on this one. Yeah. But obviously these are more... Uh, they're friendly communications, aren't they? They're not official. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. you would... Yeah, oh, yeah. At the time. But we see the date off on, on them anyway. So... Yeah. I mean, this is what they used to send them. Yeah. Little bits of paper. Look. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a text message, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it's... Oh, email, a text message now. Yeah. 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 No, that's brilliant, Maddy. That's really I mean, there was brilliant. loads of these letters, and I threw them away when my dad died. I just kept, right. kept a few back. A few, excellent. You know. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. That's really, really nice to see. So there you go, folks. That's some history there. Bit of history. Yeah. And I've also got mm -hmm. all the newsletters from the seventies. Right. Up until up until when they stopped the nineties. Right. Right, got right. them all, every one of them. What we've got here, uh, Paul? December right. 1985. Yeah, these are NTU newsletters. Yes. So, so that's I a go back to collection of these. I don't know when they start. Right. Right, that's 82. 82. Yeah. These are from 82. Onwards. Yeah. We've got it earlier than that. Yeah. So you've, 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 you've kept every letter you received. Every one. Yeah. Yeah, that's 1985. So this this folder is 80. So this is, these are three years worth of newsletter in, yeah. uh, letters in that. And we've got... That's going to be... Number 10. I don't know what that one is. Yeah, that's just... Uh, right. And in here is the results of every flight. That's 86, I see 86. So these are later on. Later yeah, on. That, that'd probably be from 85 then. Yeah, 85. 85. Yeah, yeah, 85. 85 onwards. So you're looking at around about three years on. So 88. But so that, that binder would be 85 to 88 then. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, like, yeah. This is uh, the competition fly. 86, April 86. Yeah. These are the winners, and then it goes from here. Yeah. All them. Mm. Wow. That's just eighty. This is. That's just guys, look at the fly. sheet. Look at the, look at the number of flyers on that sheet. God. And I bet you that these then the, the bottom are disqualifications. Now yeah. let's have a look at the next page. Having got disqualified as well. You want to look at yeah. the next next page? Oh my God. Well then. Oh my god. Now, gentlemen, have a look. All have disqualified. Look. These are all disqualified. Just looking at some names. Yeah. Ken, Ken Potts. Ken Potts, yeah. Ken Potts right up there. Yeah. Bristow, yeah. Colin Bristow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, CJ. Jim McDonald, mm -hmm. Tom Dilks. Tom Dilks, yeah, old hole, yeah. Roy Dowie, he was a good flyer, yeah, Roy yeah, Dowie. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Jim Johnson. Johnson's there as well, yeah. <coughs> yeah. And yourself as well. Was I on there? Yeah, on the next stage, have a look. Oh, right. right at the top. Oh, right yeah, at the top, yeah. yeah. 
P.W. Green. Five birds, one bird. Oh, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah. <coughs> there we go, there we go. Find some more. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, here's another fly. Yeah. The winners. Yeah, that's Hardy. Harry got a second on that, 17 hours 20, and that was in 1986. Yep. Yeah, and Eddie was the fifth on the 17 12. They were just minutes apart, weren't they? Yeah, well, that's what it was. Then. Yeah. yeah, it was like you were saying the uh, other Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, you beat uh, Jim by a minute. By a minute? Yeah. Yeah, all these, all the yeah. few of the others. That yeah, flew. oh my god. Yeah, yourself was all right at the top, 17 hours. Oh, I'm 17 You're 17 hours, hours, yeah. hours there, mate. <laughs> just because, just minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's the first minutes from 17 hours. 17 hours, it? let's have a look. And that's gone to 17, 40. 45 minutes. And that was a New, record. Yeah, no, yeah, that was uh, a Hardy, Mr. Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's loads of others yeah. in there. In every, every one of these news, like, yeah. there's, there's the results. Yeah. Yeah, all these disqualified. There's, look people. at that. Look at the list of the disqualified people there. Yeah. Right. All them timed in. Yeah. That's endless, isn't it? Yeah, that's nothing like that nowadays. Oh no, you never see anything like that. Been oh, wiped. you never see anything like that. It's been all. wiped out. Yeah. There's the winners. Yeah. Harry mm. Shannon. Shannon again fourth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nineteen hours seven. Here's me. That's you. Section on and you were timed at seventeen forty nine. That was a section, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was 86. That was 86, yeah. That was 86. Yeah, oh, here's another one. What's this one? Yeah, there's another one as well. Yeah. Look at that. That's, yeah, Paul, Paul, yeah, Paul, 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 yeah, 1632. Shannon got 1632 as well. Yeah. Yeah. All them. And all them, yeah, 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 definitely. Look at that. Look at that list of names. Jim Johnson. Yeah, Jim Johnson there at the top. Manuel Fenton. Yeah, yeah, Fenton up there. North Belfast, yeah. yeah. Nah, priceless, isn't it? Nah, priceless. And all these. Yeah, and look at that again, at least. Disqualified all these. Yeah. Yeah, Tom Dilks again. <laughs> Tommy, and then George Pilot as well. Tom yeah, Dukes was all right for getting disqualified. You don't time him very often. No, he's because he, he kept flying, isn't it? <coughs> they kept, kept it flying, yeah. And he got disqualified that year as well. And so did George Pilot. And uh, I'm just looking at looking for your name in there somewhere. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Cress, uh, yeah, Cresswell as well. Yeah. Uh, I used to fly every fly. Yeah? Every fly. Oh, here I am. I've just seen me somewhere. You are... And green, green, green. Oh, I can see that in there. Yeah. You're definitely you're in there somewhere. I'm in there. Go yeah. Is there in there? No. Oh, That's brilliant. One. Yeah. So every fly mm. that ever flew, mm. I've got the records of all of them. Well, there you go. There you go. Everything that you can. Yeah. Everything I go, ah, yeah, section, yeah, 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 yeah. You've got, yeah. Oh, Dilks. Dilks as well. And you've got Pilot, George Pilot as well. Yeah. With 19 hours, Manchester, that's 1980, no, 1987. Yeah. Yeah, and Paul Bowden, uh, 1851. Uh, then you've got Shannon again, Harry, 19 hours. Tom Dilks timed in, 19 hours. Yeah, that, that, Excellent. that's probably the oldest time he's ever done. Yeah, because yeah, okay. I remember him say, mentioning that... Uh, he just had to sit all night. Yeah. Landed by the following morning at eight. Yeah, well. Yeah. Let's find uh, some of the ones. Right. So any any time you want to know anything. Yeah. A certain I've got them. Brilliant, brilliant. Nineteen eighty one. Nineteen eighty one. Yeah. Go back, go back here. Nineteen seventy eight. Nineteen seventy eight. There we go. Now we're into the seventies. Dilks. Yeah, William, William Hall, 1701. Camplin. Camplin, Springfield, 1642. Paul Bowden. Yeah, Bowden, Hansworth, 1610. 78. 
Champlain third. Champlain third, 1520. They smell the other day, smell the old piper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look how many flying in 78. Yeah, look at it. Must have been, it must have been an event, I mean, locally as well. Yeah. Kits here, kits I mean, there. There was about four or five clubs in this area. Yeah. And they'd all got over 20 members. Oh, there you go. The Warsaw Club had got the, the biggest uh, membership. So it was, it was raining tipplers then? Yeah, raining tipplers. Yeah. Oh. Brilliant. Right. That's, yeah. That'll be cool for us. So the, yeah. that's where yeah. it starts from, 78, yeah. these new descriptors. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Right, brilliant sir, thank you very much indeed. I mean, there's one I want to show you. Yeah, go on. If I can find it. I don't know what year it was, but mm. uh, the one year someone put a poster in the Peregrine Hunters, right. it was all RAF men with the guns. Right, 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 right. It was just after the war. Mm. It's in here somewhere. I'm, I've been meaning to try and find it. And there's uh, two or three pages full of rings. Right. NTU rings, roller rings. Ah, yeah, 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 rings, yeah, yeah. Just from one site in Bristol. Wow. Uh, Paul, uh, now for some commonly asked questions and I'm sure the Tipler fans out there that, you know across the globe uh, they would be eager and trusted to you know find out uh, further about you and your hobby so we would really like to know how did you become associated with uh, Tipplers and how long has it been? Uh, I was associated with Tipplers at an early age about eight years old because mm -hmm. my dad kept them right my dad kept Tipplers all the time I grew up right. what strain would that be? The same as what I've got. Mm. They all come from my dad's pigeons. Right, right, right. And uh, I can go back. There's a there's a picture of a pigeon on my front door. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. That's a 1973 pigeon. Ah, right, okay. That pigeon I bred round. Everything goes back to that. Right. That was my dad's. Right, 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 so, right, 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 right. And he had pigeons from well Floyd. Mm. Right, okay, so obviously, so it runs in the family. Oh, yeah. So you've seen the birds with the... Uh, My dad used to fly in competition. With all uh, rings on and all that. Well, with his own rings on, but he used to have pigeons on. Mm. It. And uh, he was a good mate of uh, Mickey Camplin's. Right. That was yeah. in the same clubs, right. things like that. Right. Started right. in mm -hmm. Birmingham, mm -hmm. then Warsaw, then Mickey Camplin went to uh, Springfield. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that also sums up how do you acquire them and who from. So yes, obviously, yes. <laughs> you, yeah. your dad, and that just we can trace that back to Wolf. So that's not an issue. Now, uh, you know, we, we, uh, a lot of people have an issue. Uh, you know, you always hear oh losses, this and that, especially when they settle them. Yeah, yeah. You know that that particular phase of settling when you yeah. wean them and you look to settle them. And a lot of people, I, I personally think it's the eager beaver syndrome. That you do lose birds off if you were if you if you it's a process because if you're if you are calm and uh, subtle about it and you, you you're gonna uh, you know uh, you're gonna pace that out and I'm sure your losses can be reduced significantly so now how do you and how would you suggest and uh, how do you settle your tickets? I used to have an ivory on the top right cage yeah a cage on the top yeah, yeah. and they used to come in through there but that was a, a big help but. They were settled pigeons now, is I'll just let them come out on the grass. Right. Through the door, the tip was onto the grass with a few rollers and often on the shed for a bit. But sometimes they just strike right up and away away. Right, right, right. right. So you, you, you do still suffer losses? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's part and parcel. Right? Yeah, you yeah. Will, you will do, depending on how agitated the birds, the, the birds are or how. Uh, sort of, uh, what, if, if, if the youngster's full of energy. And what I find as well with a loft like that, it's massive, the roof is. It's yes. 42 foot yes. by 10 foot. Yes. I'm frightened. Yes. So when I'm first settling them, yeah. they'll drop on the edge, on the fence, mm. anywhere but on the top of the bed. Right. So, you know, it's hard yeah. to believe that. Mm. So, I mean, when you, so when you got over that second period of time and then, uh, what traits are important to you when you are selecting uh, a kit? Uh, well, I used to train them 
four to six hours every other day right. on barley. Right. Nothing but barley. Mm -hmm. And well, you, it's all the, all down to training. Right. So what measures would you be looking at when you're feed, you feeding them just on body? Well, I'd, I'd log four to six hours out of them every right. other day. Right. So what would be the measure? Half a measure, full measure? What well, be? full measure. Right. But uh, in tipler flying, you've got to learn to control your pigeons. Yeah. So when you put them droppers out, mm. you want them pigeons down. Yeah. Especially if you're flying them in the dark. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of people like their pigeons to fly on and on after they've put the droppers out, but I used to like mine to drop within five or ten minutes. Ideal, yeah. So then you're controlling them pigeons, mm -hmm. not them controlling you. Mm. That's my opinion. So how would you achieve that? Would you, I mean, would that to do with feeding the just right amount, that, that, that feed and... Well, when you, just before you're getting them properly mm. kitting and flying four hours, mm -hmm. you're building them up to that. Yeah. So you, they've been on like half a measure, you know, three quarters of a measure, and then you're getting them up. And then every other day you're flying them four hours, four or five hours, mm -hmm. dropping on. Then a week before the fly, the competition, you start building them up. Mm. Seeds, mainly seeds, build them up, mm. put them out, and then hopefully they'll do the business. Right. So, I mean, obviously, so that's, that's selection. So... How would you select that particular bird to say, look, I want, I want this in the kit? Would that be based on what they've done and what not? They select themselves because yeah. you can fly in them. I mean, all of a sudden you have one, one bird go missing or something. Then after that, you can't trust it. Mm. It might have dropped away somewhere. Yeah. So they do sort themselves out. Right. So when do you actually begin training them? Uh, <clears throat> well, no sooner than babies, really. Mm -hmm. But old birds... With the, when you put them away all, all through the winter, mm. you start about February, you start, you know, having them out, slowly getting them going again, and so on, and do the same again. Right. Four to six hours, once you've got them up to the, you know. So, and what, what are the indicators, and when would you know that your tip is actually hitting form? I mean, just by observing them, right. and watching them. Because, see, when I... When I fly pigeons, I watch them all the time, mm. as much as I can, like, mm. you know, in and out watching them. Mm. Right, brilliant. So, so you get to know the in birds individual, like? You do. I mean, you, you, I mean, obviously you get to know, I mean, the main thing is that uh, I look out for the flight pattern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and when they're up there, and I'll be, then, because that will help me kit uh, with compatibility, with similarities, yeah, and that's what I've been looking at. I mean, I know people just let them go and just go do the other chores, and I'm thinking that's useless. That is absolutely useless. That's just like dropping the tipler without a dropper, and you don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. So just as what, yeah. So it's it's very important. I, I personally think uh, you know uh, that it's it's because a lot as because my birds come from Harry Shannon, right. very psychic. Like and uh, so a lot of it is that. I mean, obviously you've known him and. Uh, it's a lot of common sense because what I when I when I spoke to Jim earlier on, I had Davy Warner the other day. We did a feature on Davy, uh, so it was it, it comes down to common sense. You know, good practice. Good practice is common sense. Yeah. You know. So, uh, you know. Anyway, uh, no, uh, I mean, people have preferences. Like you know, uh, I mean, I, I could I could say look, I have preferences flying hens or mix or just cockbirds. So. Why, I mean, what would you rather fly in a competition and why would you fly it? Well, I used to fly mixed kits because at the end of the season, mm. if you've dwindled them down and you've probably got two cocks and one in left. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got to be ruthless with tipplers. Mm. They do anything wrong. So if, say, one of them drops on the roof, you don't fly that again because you can't trust it. Mm. So you need to, you know, breed a few to get the best. Right. If a pigeon does something wrong in tipplers, you don't you don't trust it again. Right, and you wouldn't even put it back into no. That's it. It's gone. Finished. Because <clears throat> you'd be breeding those bad traits, and that, well, that would that be it. It'd probably be all off for breeding, mm. obviously. But uh, once it's made a mistake, it's no good for flying after. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you fly them in the dark, mm. and uh, you know them flying and flying. Mm -hmm. You're watching them, and then one pulls out the back, 
all of a sudden it disappears and mm. does the night out. Mm. It's no good no more. Probably good to breed up, but yeah. Oh, that's what I was form. getting at. That's what I was like, yeah. indirectly getting at. That you know, I mean, obviously, if it's from uh, you know, so you would actually think, okay, he's made a mistake, but look, we can perhaps keep him for breeding. Yeah. For, for you know, okay, we can keep him. Yeah. yeah. So you just mentioned about you, you. You mentioned dark now. I mean, do you train to dark or do you train into dark? And what is your method of uh, dark training? Well, when you first start mm -hmm. dark training, you gradually get them into it, yeah. into the dark. Dusk onwards. Yeah. yeah. Keep them there. Now, soon you've dropped them, mm -hmm. keep them in the ivory with the lights on mm -hmm. for a good half an hour, just so as I'm getting used to darker and darker. Mm -hmm. But keep the droppers in with them as well. Yeah. You know, go from there. Then the next time you have them out, give them another extra five minutes into the dark, but watch them all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think that be, you know, not Touching, very good, yeah. put the droppers out. Mm. They'll, you know, they'll spoil a good pigeon for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. sort of so it's, it's it's a game of being patient. Yes, because it's it's, that's right. They yeah. might be ready, but the birds are not. No. So that's 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 crucial. But that's that's good. That's fair to do. And uh, now, in terms of like, you know, uh, do you use any artificial means in your loft to affect the flight feather molds? Of your birds, like you know, like in the racing pigeons, no, no. darkening systems and whatnot. No, nothing like that. Just, just, just a natural process. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it's, uh, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, so it's, this, it's a, this time of year yeah. anyway. You finish flying. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you it's, just yeah. put them away, malt them through. Yeah. Ready for next year. True, true. And it's only still not uh, even the the worst. The furthest will go is that third week in October, mm -hmm. and by then the even the late malters will just absolutely have. Uh, completed that cycle. Yeah. Just feed them up on good, good corn. So yes, yeah. going through the malt. Yeah. So, uh, so, I mean, droppers play a significant part. Yes. As, as we all know. And uh, so, what's uh, your system of dropping, and what droppers do you keep, and why do you keep that particular strain of droppers? Well, um, fantails, cross fantails, I used to use. Right. Yeah, and applied. Good. Mm -hmm. Drop as a dropper. True. Keep them hungry, they'll do what you want. True. Again, that control and discipline comes yes. into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand. But obviously, uh, to, to, to bring my personal uh, sort of thing into it, he says, I mean, I'm looking for a bigger fuel tank. Right. You get it? I mean, obviously, if I'm going to have them for a little while chasing corn, I just don't want, I mean, anything that's smaller. In stature, and smaller in like the uh, the the crop size and whatnot, quicker it'll fill. So I'm kind of like you know when I'm going to be selecting my droppers, I'm going to be even if I have to make a hybrid, you know I would actually look for something. This is my personal take on it, and uh, you know and I I would try to when once I'm a bit settled into our new place, I would actually try to do that. I would try to get a hybrid dropper yeah. with with a big enough fuel tank. But the thing is with a dropper, yeah. Once you feed it too much, it won't do nothing. No, you won't, no. Useless. Yeah. So you've got to keep them hungry yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, you, I mean, I used to have, I used to have two kits of six. Mm -hmm. when, when you've had the one kit of six yeah, out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. with the young birds playing yeah. about all day, yeah, yeah. they get full up. Of course they do, yeah. So, come when you, you've got to fly the night time, you're flying your old birds. Yeah. You need another kit to drop them. Absolutely. You know, so it makes sense to, have, you know. It, it it really does. It really really does. So lots. yeah yeah yeah. No, it, it it really does because if we can if we split our kits, why not split our droppers? Because That's they're right. going to be look, fresh droppers for fresh kit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely spot on. No hats you, off to you. You for want that. them to work no heads off so guys listen you you just listen to paul uh, actually that's really really that's you can't get a bigger point of them nobody actually mentions that so look if you got kits so equally do i the droppers to them because look for the right 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 reasons so no brilliant brilliant now uh in in terms of like you know for your flying i mean uh, what do you feed your flyers and what you see the crucial part what determines uh your selection of grains and seeds you use well, you want nice quality barley and wheat and right. anything else. So that forms the basis of that for you, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, mainly canary seed, mixed canary seed. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, white dairy, things like that. Yeah. Bit of maize here and there. Right. Not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. A couple of peas here and there. 
you know, anything just to pick them up. Maze you mentioned. So what any particular maze? The popcorn oh, yeah. maze popcorn, or the, yeah, the, the, the very small the popcorn. smaller one. Yeah. For some people, uh, a lot of people it, don't like using it. Yeah, I don't. I don't personally. I don't use maze. No, no. I don't use maze at all. But uh, it, it's uh, you know. But then again, it's people that some some other flyers or uh, fancy do use maple. Bees. I, w I wouldn't use it on young birds. No, I would on old birds. Yeah. Bees. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's it's yeah, absolutely right there. But you don't give them a lot. No. Yeah, selective. Isn't it? Selective. Yeah. Yeah, very selective. So okay, and. Uh, I will pick your brains in terms of uh, obviously look you have your system of doing things and I I, I respect that I respect that. And well, it's, like I say, it's, it's been a long time since I've yeah, the team. Yeah, yeah, and I, I wouldn't go too much into it because it, it it is a trade secret to be honest with you. Nah, there's nothing yeah. secret. Okay, I'll tell you what. Whatever you use in the house, that's what you use with your pigeons. Brilliant. Milk, a bit of milk in the water. Yeah, yeah. Things, yeah, things. yeah. You're with the Yeah, yeah. Sugar. Bit of sugar. Yeah, pick me up. Yeah, I know, I, I, I'm exit. It's all common sense. It is, it is. There's no so. secrets in tickler flying, I'll tell yeah. you now. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got no secrets. Brilliant, no, brilliant, brilliant. Because that, that says a lot in terms of then, because the whole thing is that the, the main reason behind what we're doing is that, so me and my daughter are doing, is to preserve uh, the knowledge and it's to, for, the, for, the, for the generations to come. That's if there's going to be anything left. Well, let's hope. Let's is hope there is. Falcons? Yeah, I, I, let's hope so. But I wanted to document this. Yes. You know, the, the likes of yourselves and other flyers. You know, uh, that uh, because like when we talk about Jack, when we talk about Gordon, when we talk about other people, uh -huh. uh, we only can have pictures to go by. Yeah, yeah. You get it, and not, you know, uh, like from the horse's mouth. It's now he said and he said and whatnot. The, I knew all them people. Yeah. What yeah. you just mentioned. Yeah. So it'd be, it'd be nice. I mean, after I ask you these series of questions, then it'd be nice if you can uh, tell me some tales and some stories, uh, you know, some, some, some moments, shall we say. Right, so once the uh, birds of age basically been up there and they've been fine for you, and once they're down there, what, what, what sort of method or how would you be caring for them? Well, I'd, I wouldn't feed them straight away. Yeah. If they've done four or five hours, i just give them half an hour, then feed them. Right. You know, mainly I feed them, used to feed them barley. Mm. And a pinch of linseed. Right. That's it. And you keep them on that until the week before the fly and mm. then boost them up. Brilliant. Really, really, really. Oh. Right. Now, I've seen your lots, they're quite big. <laughs> and they're decent size. Okay, they're decent size to house, uh, house one's hobby. Uh, now, Obviously, that's a chore also at the same time. They're pretty to look at and when the cleaning gets them going, you know, and if you have birds housed in every section, that's a lot of work. Now, what is your loft management system? And in total, at one time, I mean, especially, I'm, I'm going back to pigeons, uh, tippers uh, in, in particular, uh, that how many would, would you be housing at that particular time? And what is that, or what system did you implement? I mean, I only used to keep about four to five pairs. Right, okay. You know, yeah. you can breed, breed plenty of four or five pair. You can, yeah. Where I used to live up the other house, mm. it was like a very small garden. Yeah. And an 8 by 6 shed. Yeah. With a, like, 6 by 6 on the side of that, mm. with an ivory on. Right. Which was very small, really. Yes, yes. And I used to do everything in there. Mm. You know. Management. So, yeah. Flying and breeding. Yeah. You had to, isn't it? You had no yeah, choice. Yeah, no choice because I've got a very small garden. Yeah. Now I'm out there, I've got plenty of room. Yes. Probably too much room, really. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is really amazing. I mean, I mean so. the thing is, if I didn't keep Birmingham rollers, mm -hmm. I wouldn't need that much room. No. You only need a, not much room for tipplers. No. Because you don't keep many. No. No, no, no. Right. You only keep the very best. Hmm. I know I've seen it. It's just you know, it's, it's obviously the, the ventilation system is really sought after as well in terms of it's thought after actually. And uh, so, what sort of is there any particular lighting that you would like to have in there, or you have in there that uh, is probably re uh, replacing the like you know now you get the tube lights. Yeah, yeah. For sunlight equivalent and this and that and all that ratio. I've just I mean, got the uh, just in a little case in every section. Right, right. Just a standard light. Yeah. On the top, I used to have uh, the, you know, the big yeah. 
I've took them down now. All so. oh, right, the, the spotlights. Spotlights, you know. <laughs> any any tow troubles with the neighbours with the spotlights? No, no. No, could have well, gone. If you look behind, yeah, there's nothing behind. No, no, there isn't. I oh, see. So it was it was facing. The lights were shining right at the back. At the back. Right. Well, right on, right. The top, on the facing top. Facing back. Back. Yeah. So any overspill would be obviously going into no man, no one's business. So. Yeah. 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 Right now, uh, on to breeding now, uh, Paul. Uh, now, I mean, nice thing you mentioned that you keep. Uh, I was going to ask you actually, how many pairs do you keep? So you keep five pairs, right? Well, I keep eight pairs now. Now, okay. I've still got eight pairs. Right, right, right. Now, what is your method, or what is the method by which you breed? I mean, family pairings or best to best? Well, it depends really, because I mean, I haven't put nothing into my pigeons for. I put a pigeon in in 1983 or something like that. Which was? It was one of uh, Billy Brown's right. from Alden. Right. And it was like a Macclesfield black model. Right. right. And I bred that in. I flew younguns off them. The original one mm -hmm. bred off the young one, which was half mine, half his in. Mm -hmm. Flew that, took good time with it. I had that up, bred off that. Mm. The young one off them, if I bred a good young one off them, I'd pair that up the next time, mm. get rid of that one, and so on and keep wet. So you breed it in and breed it out at the same time right. over a few years. Right, yeah. yeah just yeah. to strengthen the blood. Yeah, yeah, you need that, you need that, uh, yeah. Because that's obviously that, uh, you know, I mean, to me, genetic compatibility. Mm. It's, it's important as well. But yeah. like I say, with my pigeons, I'm yeah. back with my father's records. Yes. To 1966. Mm. Wow. You know, so. How close is too close? In well, the I've, I've close? never paired brother and sister. Right. I've never paired that close. Right. I've never paired father to daughter. Right. I've always kept it as much apart as I could. From to the source. So as you can keep it going for longer and longer, for years and years. Right. You know, if you don't pay a close, you right. might have, well, I think you am anyway, you can keep the strain for a lot longer. If you don't pay a close? If you don't pay a close. Right, and if you do pay a close, what would happen? Well, I, I think when you pay a close, they get weak, and they get like, Wet feet and things like that. Right. Have you tried it? I've not tried it now. But right. I've seen other people that have. Right. You know they. Yeah. So you you get you get abnormalities. You get deformities. Yeah, and deformities. Yes. You pair too close. Yes. Yes. And you do. Pair yeah. like brother and sister and. A fa yeah. Father and daughter. Yeah, you do get that. Keep keep going in like that. It's it will, but there, there becomes a trend, and uh, I think there becomes a pattern of deformed feet. Yeah. Either one of the uh, claw. Yeah. Uh, will be yeah yeah yeah. I've I've actually seen that. And they get weaker. They do get weaker. They do get weaker. Yeah yes you're absolutely right. So uh, now uh, in, in, we still stick. We've got to stick together. But like I was saying, my best pairing yeah is uncle to niece yeah yeah and yeah. auntie to nephew. You, you them are my best pairing. You you are you absolutely right because the results. Yeah. Uh, in terms, yeah. You can keep going. You can keep doing. You can keep. You can. I mean, look, the the, the combinations, you know, are endless. Endless. Yeah. The combinations. Rather are than two clubs. The, absolutely, absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. That's that was my best pairing yeah. spot to do like that. Absolutely, because I've got to be honest with you. I've done. I'm. I'm it took me nearly three. Uh, well, nearly four years to get to what I. I mean, in the process, and now finally this year, uh, early on this year, I've. Ha I mean, uh, uh, the, it's a hen now, it's a hatch. It's exactly 110% what I wanted. Oh, good. It took me four years yeah, just to yeah. get one bird. Yeah, yeah, and it will. You know? and You've got to be dedicated to do you that. You have to, you have to. And this is, I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm really, really over the moon because it's exactly how I wanted to look. And the trend and the traits, it's just, it's there. Mm -hmm. But it took me, it wasn't, oh, I'll put this together, I'll put this together. Next uh, hatch, I'll have this. You know, and it's people don't really realise that, that science is behind it yeah. in terms, you know, that, that, that dedication, yes. that commitment. Yes. And the more, uh, what you will face more, uh, more often is the disappointment. You know, I could have given up two years back into it. There's always disappointment. There is, yeah, absolutely. I mean, with pigeon flying, mm. tipplers, rollers, racers, mm. you've got to be dedicated yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to go all the way. Mm. It's no good 
doing all 40 because you'll never do no good. So, uh, now, what, what do you feed your breeders and do you, I mean, seasonal, and that seasonal variations when the weather changes, now, do you change their diets during that change? Well, I, I mainly put them on uh, breed and weed. Mm. It's like a mixture. mixture yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, as they've gone through the malt, yeah. I put a lot more wheat with it. Mm. So they want a lot of wheat. Right. And when they when they finish the malt, I just you know just a bit of wheat, bit of barley, now and again a bit of good stuff. Mm. You know because they they're not flying. They don't need the you know they don't need nothing. I'm just being right. fed. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. So, okay. And do you use any like any other additives, uh, any sort of uh, enhancement products or anything like that? I mean, now and again, I'll put a bit of a uh, cider vinegar in once a week, like yeah, just a cup full of cider for vinegar. the acidity level in my tubs yeah. in a gun. Just yeah. tip a bit in and get yeah. take it up there. Right, 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 right. And now and again, I'll put a bit of calcium in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, mate. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's okay. So there's no particular conditioning that you do no. before you breed them and whatnot. No. Right. I, I wear coxie, canker, wormer. Yeah. I do that before I pair them up. Yeah. What wormer do you use? Uh, Hawker's wormer. Right. The right. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just various. Uh, I mean, I I stay away from uh, certain uh, commercial yeah. products. I yeah. you know. I, I tend to go more. Um, Sort of uh, uh, more prescribed sort of uh, oh, really? medication, and that's uh, verm especially. And what about jabbing for uh, PME? I do them every year. And what do you use? You oil, you oil based or uh, water based? Well, I use the uh, Columbavac if we can get it, but sometimes you can't get water, it. So it's water based. Yeah. So you use the other one, uh, no, Novelist. Novelist. Yeah, the white one. Yeah, yeah, that's oil based. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Brilliant. But, but I only do them once. I never do them. I never do them twice. Right. So you well, you mean like so I've, if I breed twenty young birds? Yeah. You only do them once. once. That's it. That's you don't do a booster. I never do them again. Yeah. No need to. I mean, I've I've, I've done it. I've, I've done the booster as well as I've done not done the booster. And yeah. uh, it's just really, uh, I, I mean, touch wood. It hasn't like you know. I haven't seen any adverse effects. Yeah. Yeah. Now, mine are you. Uh, now I've done what I what I tend to do is uh, I actually before. Well, I, I, I give them, uh, uh, you know, it's, every, everyone has their own methods and ways of practice uh, or implementation a certain way. Now, uh, what I do is that I tend to keep them, give them a course of uh, before uh, the vaccination, I give them about five to seven days on a certain antibiotic. I run that through, a few days off, a bit of uh, vitamins and whatnot, you know, just to build them back up. Then I deworm them and then I let them on again. So give it 10 days before that, and then I will jab them. Yeah. You know, that's how I'll do it, because it's, uh, obviously it's recommended as well, but recommendations are, recommendations are only good Some as pe that. yeah, people who want to do them. So, but I just do that anyway. Uh, I'll be doing that. So, so that's my way of doing it. That's how I feel comfortable. You know, and, uh, but anyway, and so what, what are your thoughts on antibiotics then? Uh, I only use antibiotics now and again. If you if you're you know, if, if you think them, yeah, you know, I've gone down the nick. Mm. But usually, when I have sick pigeons, I just kill them. I don't mess about. No, no, I get you. Yeah, I, I look at what I've got to preserve and protect rather than that yes. individual bird. If you have yeah. one good, you know, down in the dump, sick, I just tend to kill them. I think that's. I think that's just. My, wife, my wife don't like it. No, gone. Yeah. So I'm, 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 this is obvious, but I've still got to ask you because. Uh, so okay, what is your favourite? Uh, I was going to say tipless strain, but okay, what 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 strain of pigeons would be your favourite pigeons and why? Well, I like the pigeons of my tipplers I've got. I've had them a long time. Yeah. They fly well. They used to fly well. I've done a lot of good times with them. I've done over nineteen hours five times mm. with old birds. I've done over seventeen hours with young birds. Mm. And I used to win the shows, the NTU shows with them. Brilliant. So, what more can you ask for? No, you can't ask for much, mate. Oh, excellent. And now, in terms of uh, if you were to give tips out, now, your top three tips uh, for the, you know, from your experience with tipplers? Top three tips? Yeah. Uh, get good birds to start with. Mm -hmm. Training. It's all about training. 
The more training, the better. That's it really. Mm. Observation, you don't watch them all the time. I mean, there's people, fly tipplers, and just lose some heart giving the apps and not watch them. Mm. Well, you don't know what's doing anything wrong then. So you need to watch them to, to pick your best birds. Mm. Right, now, message for the novice. Uh, message for the novice. Just go around and watch, watch people who fly regular. Just go and watch them, see what they do, if they let you like. You know, other than that, you've just got to watch people. Mm. Watch and learn and make mistakes and learn. That's right, yeah. mm. But you you will learn by your mistakes anyway. Mm. Over the years, text time, tip will fly. Does. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, uh, our time's up here, Paul. Thank you very much indeed for having us. We thoroughly enjoyed the day today. So, indeed, it's been a day. Uh, you know, that it's been, I've enjoyed every part of it, being Good. here today, and the, your hospitality. So, thank you very much indeed for having us. So, that's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. Thank you.